Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the video. Today we will be covering the tri Brigade deck deck that I've put together for you all. And we're going to go into all the details how to play this deck exactly. And at the end of the video we have some gameplay footage as well. So the main two engines in this particular deck are the Zodiac engine as well as the tri Brigade engine. With a little bit of a splash with a Zeus to spice things up with your Dryden. So first let's cover the tri Brigade engine. And the first thing you'll notice is that these have absolute walls of text on them. So let's go ahead and simplify this all for the newer players out there. Do keep in mind that we'll be overly simplifying these effects so there will be some exceptions in regards to extra deck monsters and hand traps and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part you should be able to figure it out while you were playing. So tri Brigade Karras basically has the effect that discard a Zodiac or tri Brigade creature and you can special summon discard. Now Val has the effect when it's sent to the graveyard you can add a Zodiac or tri Brigade monster from your deck to your hand. Kit has the effect that if this one is sent to the graveyard you can send another monster from your deck to the graveyard. Finally Fractal has the effect that you can discard this card in order to send another monster from your deck to the graveyard. On top of that the in-deck tri Brigade creatures have a on the field trigger where you can banish X monsters from your graveyard in order to special summon a link monster with a link rating equal to the number of monsters banished. It's important to remember that each of these effects can only be triggered once per turn per creature and also that you can mostly only target your tri Brigade and Zodiac monsters in your deck. These creatures right here will be your four main creatures you will be wanting to go into when you do your special link summons. So the first link creature is a link 2 creature called uh, Ferriget and this one lets you special summon a monster from your hand and when this one is sent to you the graveyard you can draw one card and put one card from your hand to the bottom of the deck. The next one Bear Broom, this one has an effect that allows you to discard two cards in order to special summon a banished monster. When this one is sent to the graveyard you can add a tri Brigade trap from the deck to your hand. You do have to put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck afterwards though. So the trap that you will be fetching is Tri Brigade Revolt. This one lets you special summon a number of your creatures that are either banished or in your graveyard. And then you negate their effects and you immediately use those creatures in order to link summon a Tri Brigade Link Monster from your extra deck. This is especially powerful because there are some effects that will trigger when these creatures are special summoned. I will get into more of that in a little while when we cover the last Link Monster in this list. Rugal lets you special summon one monster from your hand or graveyard and when this one is sent to the graveyard all enemy monsters get minus 300 attack for each type you control among your creatures. And finally we have Shrek, the main boss monster of this particular deck. This one when the special summoned or when another monster is special summoned onto the field on your side, you can banish one card on the field. When this one is sent to the graveyard you can also add one of your monsters from your deck to your hand so you can kind of restart your engine all over again. And because this one has targeted removal whenever it enters the field or when another creature is special summoned onto the field, you can kind of use the trap from earlier to use this effect as a kind of targeted removal. And then finally we have the Zodiac engine. The main thing you want to remember about Zodiacs is like if you have a single one of these on the board you can XYZ summon a Zodiac creature from the extra deck. So you kind of want to chain together all your extra deck summons that way. So you will end up with an XYZ creature that has at least 3 materials under it. Why that's important we will get into in a while. Each of these Zodiac creatures has a different effect if it's attached as an XYZ material. The first one allows you to deal piercing damage, the second one allows you to have like a negation effect for targeted effects or traps that want to remove your XYZ summon. And finally the whip tail has an effect that banishes the monster you attacked. What all these XYZ creatures do is not really important as long as you make sure that you put your Dryden as your last XYZ summon on top of everything because Dryden is the one that lets you detach a material to destroy a face up card on the field. On top of that all these XYZs will have attack and defense equal to the materials under it so whatever material you start your chain of summoning with will be the attack and defense for the entire card. Then after you've activated your Dryden, you removed something, you even went ahead and you attacked in with the Dryden. This is where the spice really comes in because now you can go ahead and put a Zeus 
from your extra deck on top of your Trident. And Zeus is a really cool card because if you detach two cards from Zeus, you can destroy every card on the field except itself. And this is why you needed so many materials in the first place on your Zodiacs. And this is just going to be one hell of a thing to deal with for your opponent unless they have something like a spell card that can destroy everything on your side of the field. But even then you have some flexibility in the extra deck to have some effect negation stuff in there. But for now when you're starting out you don't need to worry about it just focus on the tri brigade stuff and focus on getting your big zeus and dryden plays onto the field as for the rest of the deck there are just some tech cards in here that are not that important to know about early on when you start playing but uh, as you progress and you become more familiar with the deck you can go ahead and explore all those options while you are practicing I will make sure to put the full deck somewhere in the comment or the description of the video so that you can very easily access it and type them in on your client so that you can import all these cards one by one. If you've enjoyed the video so far, we're about to go into a little bit of gameplay footage and I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe and like the video. Also, if you want me to continue making this kind of a content, you can also consider becoming a patron or buying a nice playmat on my website. More about that at the end of the video. Alright, there we go. Our very next opponent and as you can see, this is... A bit of a clunky hand, unless you can see I will pass a second, but it does have allow for some nice plays. So with the uh, Keras in hand, you have two options here, like you can either dump the Naval, which allows you to put the uh, Fractal from your deck into your hand, or you could go ahead and dump the Kit into the Graveyard and this allows you to put another card from the, from the deck into the Graveyard. Personally, I think to put the uh, Naval in here, fetching the Fractal, Dumping the Fractal and then putting our last kit from the deck into the graveyard is just the best way to go because sorry, because that way you will have your caress on the field and you can go ahead and get your your 4 drop on the field straight away. So here you see I dumped that one into the graveyard. The opponent decides to effect failure the caress which is not really too much of a problem because this was a special summon and we still have stuff in our hand. To go off with at a later time. So as you can see I went ahead and I dumped the kid in there and then I just dumped a random tri brigade in there. I go ahead and banish some stuff from the graveyard in order to link summon but unfortunately the opponent in this case had the infinite impermanence ready in hand which kind of stopped my play but since I had two creatures I was still able to go in my next play which is the bad run. I made a bit of a misplay here, I ended up dumping both of my cards to get something back and uh, the reason why I was doing this is because I thought I can fetch the trap card from the deck into my hand but I completely forgot about the double discard and that way because of that I had to put the trap on the bottom of my deck the moment it got added into my hand. I would probably have been better off if I had just kept this thing on the field and just left it as is and just link summoned in the way or something at some point but uh, that was a bit of a mistake. The opponent was very successful in disrupting our game plan and we're up against some kind of a gravekeeper shenanigans as you can see. So now they have two things face down and uh, my plan here is pretty much to do my best to try and disrupt their plays as much as possible. I need to get rid of that trap card first and that's the way I ended up doing it. And then I believe I went into my tri brigade. At this time I didn't have my second copy of this card yet otherwise it would have been much better to go in a second copy of this in order to remove this as well and just attack in for 6000 damage. So instead I had to go for this play right here. The opponent decided to just call it a day there because, uh, well, we were going to figure out a way to get rid of the board state or maybe they expected me to have a second copy of this ultra rare at this point of time. And this is also the, the, the game where I straight away realized like, oh damn, I, I really need a second copy and I went ahead and I crafted it straight away. But yeah, another game there, let's jump into the next one. 
So here we go, our very next game. We are going second, but uh, as you can see, we have a decent going second hand. Uh, we have Nibiru in hand in case they go ultra wide. And we also have the infinite impermanence in hand in case we want to negate something. And on top of that, we have a double fire formation tanky. A bit clunky since you can only activate one per turn. But with the fire formation tanky, you can very easily fetch yourself the fractal from the deck. Dump the, the Naval into the graveyard and then fetch yourself the special summoning card. So let's see and how this plays out. The opponent is playing a very defensive uh, back row plan here as you can see. I ended up drawing the Naval here already. And they went straight for a ritual sort of... what's it called? Let's see. Ritual Source of Revealing Light. Ah, so it's like the old Revealing Light. I don't really know this card, but it allows them to negate some attacks. Not really an issue though, since we have many ways to get rid of back row in general anyways. They decide to get rid of one of our cards, and uh, this makes it a bit awkward, because now we have one card in here. So I decide to just place this one down as a set card, since we don't really have a way of special summoning anything onto the field. And I was just planning to go into a link summon here, get both the triggers of these two, and then maybe go for another play after that, especially in combination with uh, Fire Formation Tanky. I went ahead and fetched myself a Ram Ram simply because I don't know what this last thing here on the field is. And with the Ram Ram as a material, we can always negate that if it's a targeted removal or something like this. So I went into my full on Zodiac chain, as you can see, just putting all the materials under there as much as possible, Tiger Mortar, and then finally going into the Dryden so I can go ahead and remove that uh, that disgusting spiritual source right there. I destroyed that and then I tried to attack in. They go for a Dark Mirror Force, which unfortunately banished my Naval straight away. But now I was able to go into my Zeus and uh, nominate kind of a good position. I was kind of thinking like, should I plunk the card of the by the grave down here? Because technically it will get destroyed if they don't really do anything here. They went for the Raigeki, which make it, makes it very awkward. And I was kind of forced to use my Zeus now to get this dimensional fish off the field. So I didn't get full value out of the Zeus. I only was able to get rid of the fish and I actually ended up losing two cards as a result, which is, a little bit sad, but we have so much materials in the graveyard now that uh, we can very easily go into our four link summon and remove that last back row that way with uh, the nice banish. So I go ahead, I banish that, they decide to activate it just to get something out of our graveyard. And now at this point in their hand, uh, their field is completely empty, uh, which is exactly where I want them to be. So I couldn't attack in because they ended up banishing that uh, Spiritual Source of Revealing Light. But we're in a very good position now. They have one card in hand. We have a significant bot on the field right now. I ended up going for the Phoenix here by summoning the Maxi simply so I can get the kit to trigger right here. But then I realized I believe that I didn't have enough Naval. So we're two here and... Uh, I was this a misplay? Nah, I think I misplayed there. There was a Naval available. I would, I probably looked wrong. I could have put the Naval into the graveyard instead, and then Naval would have allowed me to put something from my deck into my hand. But it didn't really matter. The opponent ended up forfeiting there anyways. But yet again, a little misplay there at the end. All right, here we go. This is going to be our last replay of today, and. Uh, Right away, off the bat, we have a very decent hand. We have the Fractal in hand, which allows us to get our entire chain going by putting the Naval into the graveyard, putting something into our hand straight away. I ended up putting another Naval into my hand because I don't really plan to link summon this turn and this way by having the... Fra by not putting another Naval, by putting in another Fractal in my hand and this way I have a couple of pieces in the graveyard already for next turn. I have the Fractal ready to do a big link summon. In the following turn, I have a bit of a weak monster here to go into my Dryden's, but uh, with the Maxi and uh, with the Infinite Impermanence and the Nibiru in hand, I feel fairly confident, like maybe I can spot removal something with the Dryden or at the very least force them to use some back removal or something like that. 
I go for the maxi straight away, so whatever they go for, for special summoning, I can get some card draw, but they ended up using their Ash Blossom. I'm actually quite happy they used the Ash Blossom on that instead of one of my graveyard effects, because that way I can kind of make sure that my Fractal will be able to work during their turn. They go for some heavy back row removal, and by the looks this ended up being a Dark Magician deck, but... Uh, I was thinking to myself, if I can remove that trap card now, then I'm in pretty much a good position, right? They decide to go for the maxi. Unfortunately for them though, I'm not really going to be special summoning a lot. I'm pretty much just special summoning one link monster this turn, and then after that I will be will be banishing this one and calling it a day. So I went out, I put the Shurik onto the field. I banish the trap card and I start attacking in. We still have the Psy Frame Driver here and the Nibiru ready. The Nibiru is kind of a dead card in this particular matchup. This one is great against other uh, Tri Brigade teams and they just ended up calling it quits and giving us the victory there as well. So Tri Brigades, as you can see, they have a lot of text on the cards but when it really boils down to it, the cards are surprisingly easy to navigate, there's definitely a deck that is relatively easy for pretty much anyone to pick up. Also, well, the, all the deck cards like Maxi and such make the deck better, they are not really a must to have. You could always put in things like a Chalice or something in there to negate some effects here and there. And uh, as long as you have at least one of the the link four link monsters in your deck and maybe one trident you can build this back build this entire deck on a semi budget you do run into some issues with only having only one shurik available to you but uh, you at least you can stop playing that way especially if you're in the lower ranks it might be enough to get some wins there i'm currently still in the gold rank i'm slowly grinding my way towards diamond it's been a long time since i played Yu-Gi-Oh. i'm finally starting to get the hang of things a little bit but uh, yeah it's a lot of fun i'm really enjoying it if you want me to continue to produce Yu-Gi-Oh content please subscribe to my channel also don't forget to thumbs up the video the you send you video will be on the channel soon i want to upload this one in between quickly because this is just a a far better meta deck and i don't want people to waste all the resources to build a stupid you send you deck like i did if you want to support me financially you can do so by becoming a patron over on my patreon.com slash kugani gaming or you could buy a flesh and blood tcg play mat on my website kugani i will have a look if i can put a different print of the play mat available on my website soon for yukio players out there it is flesh and blood tcg artwork but i had it commissioned by one of my very good friends and it is beautiful artwork in general is the one that you see at the end of the video now so you might want a mat like that and uh, yeah that's all for me for today Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you all next time. Take care.